where are ICOs now? So in the beginning of this year, uh, we saw some big um, ICOs like um, Telegram, um, but things have slowed down a little bit. At least it seems so, right? Uh, the amounts raised seem to be a bit lo lower and lower. So what do you think? Is this kind of the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? And why do you think so? Well, I, I think I will start. <laughs> Uh, I think it's, it's not the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning, all that. It's just a stabilization. No? Uh, we, we had been seeing last year a lot of information. We were rushing. No? I think it was a, a, a rush on understanding ICOs. Lots of people who didn't understand what it was, they were buying. No? <laughs> and, and, and it was a situation where, where uh, anybody was really unclear on clear uh, status of what does means an ICO, why I'm buying that, what is the, what will be the benefit, and for sure the regulation in Europe is not there. So I think now, uh, the 2018, we have seen uh, some regulators alerting of be careful, this is too fast, and could be interesting, but it still is not uh, regulated. So let's calm down altogether, let's minimize risk for uh, small investors. And I, the thing, this, this is what happens 2018. A lot of uh, legal reviews and understanding what is going to be in 19. So mm -hmm. it's a transition for me. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I I'm, I'm agree that uh, always innovation goes further than, than regulation. And uh, probably, uh, I mean, it's not the end of the ICOs. Uh, there is an obvious thing that there are more ICOs than months ago, so always is, is, is much difficult to raise the, the, the money, like in, in any other kind of circumstances. But anyway, I think it, it, it will change a little bit, maybe the, 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 the way to, to raise the money, or maybe uh, first we'll go big actors on the ICOs, now you know the hype is, uh, is STO, so probably it will change a little bit, but at, at, at the end I think the, the, the most awesome thing is that uh, ICOs, STO, ICO, wherever, allows crowd sale investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so from your guys' experience, um, observa uh, observating some uh, ICOs, actively being part in, in, in some ICOs, um, what do you th see um, usually working in terms of projects, um, uh, teams, um, uh, technologies, and what uh, seems to be not working because if, if we're honest there seem to be a lot of ICO projects that don't really uh, succeed in the end right so yes. do you see some common uh, trends yes I think now we have already enough data to, to have seen that 80% of the ICOs were a scam where, where something was not there it was an idea and, and we know, you know, if we have been working in startups, we know that some startups, they don't, they don't go take off. You know? we, we start at the beginning, we raise some seed capital, but at the end, it's not enough to be in the market. Same could be happening with ICOs. Uh, all these 80% could be some of them were fake, some others is just simply it was too early. But what it, what it was working was the ones that were clearly defining the, the nature of the coin, no? If that coin was just to invest for future or was something to be used within the blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. So if you were clear of what you are uh, going to do, what is the team, if you have a tech team that really understands blockchain, that could change a little bit. But what we have seen, and also regulation was in this sense, no? in US, what it was clear, the SEC was saying, this is a future, no? this is securities. Uh, utilities is not clear, so if it's not clear, be careful because there is risk for investors. Mm -hmm. So I think w we are learning, no? It's, it's a way of learning. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I don't agree that a lot of uh, ICOs are scams. Okay, of course, that so, uh, first we should defini define what is an scam and what is not an scam. So, of course, it could be that some of them, and a lot of them could be, what, 50%, 10%, 5%, 90%. So nobody is talking about percentages. So I think be before the talk about all the scam, we should say, hey, 5% of the ICOs are scam or 90%, wherever. So, uh, and at the end, yes, I agree with you that uh, like any other kind of business, uh, it's important that the idea, the team to develop, you know, the, if you have developed some like an MVP or proof of concept or any kind of circumstances that improve your project. So, uh, but that is not just 
in the crypto world or in the blockchain world, it's like in any world, in the startup world, wherever. I mean, if you pretend to raise money, you have to show that you, are, you can prove to develop that your idea, or you have beginning to develop your idea to show you, you, your MVP or, or, any, or, or at least a proof of concept, something. So, and, and at the end, uh, yes, I mean, uh, what ICOs allowed in the past, it was I have a great idea, I raise a lot of money, and I have to develop. Yes, and I mean, agree that some of this, this, those projects, they it took one year, one year and a half to develop their the idea, but at least they had funds to develop. Because in other circumstances, two young guys with a lot of talents, mm -hmm. if they were not able to do it in an ICO, they would never be able to develop, develop that great, great idea. And that, that thing, that is the, one of the most important things, to be able to raise funds to develop an idea if we want to improve and make social impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is, I think, it's very important what you say, that uh, why ICOs had been so popular, because we are moving from crowdfunding to a, a, re, a, a, a simply put a mechanism to raise easily uh, money. So the point is uh, how we are regulated for the fundraising, why this mechanism, this technology was used in a, in a broad way, and, and, and this is the, the point. No? The, let's review how it's going in the investment world at the beginning when you are big before the seed capital and pre-seed capital or seed capital where you can get some money there, why it's uh, taking so much time sometimes and, and why an idea is not never raising a lot of money, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, speaking about risk um, and uh, risk for the investors also, do you feel that um, there should be more regulation or is um, the ICO market already regulated enough and which kind of regulations would you miss? Myself, I think it, there should be more regulation. It's not, it's not that there, is, there isn't regulation. Mm -hmm. So we are in a situation where, uh, is what we say, no? small investors could be catch in a, in a way that they could not be protected. So I think it's needed, we need more regulation, and I think in regulation in terms of protection and not control, no? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we feel that regulation controls, that is true, but it's in a way of protecting the smalls, the mm -hmm. small, small investors. I mean, what I think is that uh, what we need is to promote the right ecosystem all over the world in the, in the technology, okay? Do we need uh, in the blockchain space, uh, on the ICO space, uh, to be regulated? Yes. But the, the challenge is how to regulate a globally economy in the ledger, so, and has to be, and also in the same time to protect some investors, also to promote the talent. Mm -hmm. So this is the challenge, okay? And fast enough, please rather than just wait and see and do nothing on the, on the seats. So the politicians, they should focus on how to solve this situation and promote a, a normal and a regulation that promote the developing of the technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so when we observe the ICO market, we see more and more um, tech project and actually also startups um, raising funds uh, through ICOs. Um, do you think uh, that ICOs at some point uh, could take over um, a large part of, um, um, of, of funding for startups and eventually replace uh, some form of venture capital? Or do you think that's only a, a short-term short, short -term phenomenon that we're seeing? Yes, I think it's a, for me it's a short term. I think all what is behind a venture capital no, is, is quite complex. And right now I see us as a mechanism. It's a technology that can help us. But there still is lack of regulation, lack of, still is not strong enough or not, uh, not mature enough to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So in terms of long, long term, still we, we are not building something new. We need to be built. If it's, if it's that the mechanism to substitute venture capital is still too immature, mm -hmm. from, from my point of view. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be a mixture, but in, in, in short term, you know, it, it will see some, depending on where the DVC is based, you know, they are able to invest or not in, 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 in let's call an ICO, I mean, as long as they, they invest in, in equity, well, 
depending on where they are based. But I think it will be, it's, it's a mixture. I mean, right now, in, so in Asia, they, some of them, they are able to, to invest in ICO projects that they invest only in, in the token side. side and then or they have a mix to be buying equity plus, plus token. Mm -hmm. So I think in the next years, it will be a mix of, of, of both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you mentioned backstage that actually with your case, um, if I remember correctly, that you give um, people who have tokens the opportunity to get shares then eventually, right? So, so do you think that's a model that... Um, that no, that was an, an strategy because we thought that, um, th I mean, uh, at the journey, journey during your ICO, you learn, uh, you know, different things, and depending of your project, so uh, also you learn more, more, more stuff. So in, in, in our case, we realized that, okay, equity is important, okay, but if you develop a proper token economics and ecosystem that you too can make sense with your project, so you have to help your token, okay, rather than wait that people speculate with so your token. So we decide to think about our token as a, a, if they were equity. So our investors, we allowed, I mean, the, the big investors during the pressure, we allowed them to say, hey, do you want to change your tokens for equity? Mm -hmm. So we change, okay, in some of them, okay, and another, and on another ones, uh, we got a longer lock up. Why? Because we, wa we want, that our token increase the value, not for a speculation. R we want the increase of the value of the token, adding value to the token, okay? Mm -hmm. Making an utility token, making sense in our uh, ecosystem. So that's why we decided in this, in, in this way and, and protect a little bit our token, our token of the pumps and downs. Mm -hmm. Speaking about tokens and the future of ICOs, um, if I understand it correctly, the most common form of token are utility tokens, and nowadays uh, security tokens uh, seem to be become more and more popular. Can you explain uh, to the audience the difference between those two, and if you think if security tokens might be the future or not? Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, go, go with you first, please. Yeah, well, uh, security tokens is an option to future. So it's more close to what we are used to, to do when we, buy, when we believe that a company is going to do something good in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's more, you have a security, it's not related to really the activity of the, of the company, more related to how you believe that this company is going to perform in the future. So it's a security, you, 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 you are certain that this company you invest because it's going to do it well. Mm -hmm. Utility, you use the token for, as, as you were saying, Sunil, to move to, to, so the company is based on how much this token is used for the benefit of the business. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's used in the, in the, in the company, uh, this tokenomics, no? We, we, you don't have any other, or you have other mechanisms to, to get revenue, but yourself, your, your revenue is your, your itself token and the value of the token. Mm -hmm. So it's more in the use, no? and the other is just, just like a stock, no? mm -hmm. you, you, like a stock action in the other sense. I mean, talking about security, uh, security token and utility token, I mean, first it's depending where are you based, and yeah. I mean, it's the perception of S SAC is 99.9% .9 of the ICOs are a security, but if you go to EU, nobody answer you. Mm -hmm. If you go to Asia or Hong Kong eight months ago, they don't want to hear about security. Now they want, okay? But this, what the perception about what is a security about the, the stock exchange in, in Hong Kong is one opinion, which is different to the SEC, yes. and is different probably of EU. Mm -hmm. So at the end, we are talking globally. So I think just what I recommend is to be self-regulated and wait until the regulators decide what is a security, what is an utility, but and and use all the tools that you can to be a self-regulation, a self-regulated uh, uh, utility. Now the hype is STO, so let's go for security token. I mean, well, in, in Europe, it's utility is not regulated, so utility you have no way. To, to be recognized in European communities. Yeah, but if you want to security, go... Security, yes. No, but if you want security. to go... Okay, I want to do an ICO in Spain. I go to uh, CMN to, to say, hey, how can I do an ICO, uh, STO regulated? They say, mm, That doesn't exist. 
they don't know how to. Okay. Okay. I will do an STO, an uh, ICO. If it's a utility token, they give you the same answer. So uh, at the end, use the common sense. Said, if you are a financial instrument, probably you look something similar, a security or bond, something like that. If you utility, your token has an utility, probably it's a utility token. Mm. Okay, I make sure that you know on the promotion, the marketing, you do in a KYC, AML, all the process. Like uh, if you have to do prospectus, if you raise over than now seven million, you have to do prospectus or not, or depending where your base company is based. So use common sense and try to be as much self-regulated as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're sitting here with a blockchain entrepreneur and with a representative of a big traditional bank. Uh, so maybe I ask you first, Sunil, do you think that blockchain and cryptocurrencies have the potential to eventually put people like Sabadei out of business in 20 years from now? Or I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I 100% <laughs> believe that it will. Okay? Yeah. I don't think that banks will disappear, but they will convert to another. Uh, to another uh, I mean, the core business, it will change. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, probably... 20 years ago, the COVID were, were to borrow money. Now they don't borrow money because the, the rates, are, the interest are so, so low, and they're selling insurance. Or, or other banks are selling t TVs. Okay? So probably, will, I think it will change. I don't know how, but it will. I mean. Yeah, and I will say that being in a, in a company that more than 100 years, over these 100 years, had been happening lots of innovation have been having a lot of progress. I can imagine no, when before the ATMs, how it was the bank, and it was a few years ago, mm -hmm. and also the cars, no? everything that had happened in the finance world, in the banking world, had been there. Nevertheless, the bank still is there. So it's more about organization, it's more about how the organization can embrace change, how the organization can detect and anticipate the change, and how fast is, is, an, is an understanding, no? adapting and adopting. So it doesn't, the bank today, no? the Sabadei today is not the Sabadei of uh, 100 years ago when it starts. And it's because of that, it's still there. No? And, and, and the point that is there is because we have the trust of the client. Mm -hmm. So if we understand the 21st century, where we are in the 21st century, who are our clients in the 21st century, and how they are evolving, and how is the competition, no? and how is changing the competition, that is the way to, to be in the business and continue being in the business. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Can you name some uh, examples where Bank Sabadei maybe already today uh, is experimenting with um, blockchain projects? Yes, we have been, in fact, we started no, in 2016 really fully on the blockchain wall. What we have been done is testing. We have a lab, internal lab, where we are testing all the different technologies of blockchain. We, call, we say blockchain like if it's on something concrete, but in reality there is several technologies around what it is the blockchain, no? And, and what we have been understanding is what is the maturity of the, of the technology. Mm -hmm. We had the chance to bring uh, Vitalik Buterin in 2017 in the mobile to be together with him in a, in a hack day where we were, uh, what we were doing, and we believe, and we continue believing, that blockchain is going to give us the possibility to have ecosystems, to work together in the same platform, the same infrastructure, with other companies, startups or no startups, but delivering something collaborative, mm -hmm. and for the same client that is us, our client, or their client. So what we try, what we did in the hot day, and what we are continuing doing, is investigating in ecosystems where we can create a new, new revenue process, new revenue services where we can join the effort of uh, ourselves as a bank, an uh, insurance company, real estate, uh, other companies, uh, health, that together we can deliver a, a common service. And, mm -hmm. this is, and this is why last year we promote and we are uh, right now pushing hard for the Alastria Consortium because we believe in, in the consortium. We believe that the consortium is an NGO to change the regulation, to help, not to change, but to help to create the regulation in this new world of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a way to create the scenario for, for delivering pro products very soon. Okay. 
I think we have maybe a few seconds yeah, left. Uh, so, question for you, Sunil. Um, if, if you could turn back time um, uh, from today's perspective, is there something you would um, do differently uh, regarding your ICO, or d did it all went as you planned? No, of course we didn't. Uh, it didn't went as we planned. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are a lot of things that uh, we right now we would do it differently, okay? Mm -hmm. But I think we don't have time to say all of them, but I am open to discuss with anybody who wants to, to know more. But uh, for, for us, the, mo the most important thing it, it was we were focusing more on the crypto space, and we should focus more, or maybe at the same level, on the sports ecosystem, because our, our uh, company is based in, on the sports. So we should be able to promote more in, in the sports ecosystem rather than only in the crypto. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs>